morning, Christian Faith family. It's so good to see you, whether it's on Facebook Live, our podcast, or here at our campus. We are so glad that God has brought you here. We are excited to celebrate Him, to connect with you, and to care for you. One of the ways that we care for you is through prayer, by name, and by need. So be sure to send in your prayer requests so that we can stand with you. Lastly, if you're with us online, we encourage you to interact drop a comment, and share. We want to see as many people touched by God as possible. And we thank you for joining us as we reach people who are near to us but far from Him. Be blessed. Pastor Jason was talking to me when we were talking about, you know, he asked me every year. He's like, baby, you want to say something on Mother's Day? We know it's Mother's Day, and it's great for the women to hear from you because they don't get that opportunity to hear from you often. So he always asks, and I always say, no, I'm good, thank you. They're fine. (laughs) They hear from me every Sunday. I do some words of encouragement, so we'll be okay. And uh, And then it goes on. That's the gist of it. But this time, um, after we had that conversation, I was laying in bed and God was like, you really should say something. You should talk about really your your journey that you have been going through as far as um, it's called Self-Care Saturday. And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. I can do that because I know that I've struggled with self-care and... Um, As a mother, sometimes mothers also struggle with a self-care. So that'll be a great idea. So I started getting information about Self-Care Saturday, and and then um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I talked to Pastor Jason, talked to my husband. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to preach. I got a word from God. It's going to be okay. And then a pivot happened, and I really forgot that I had told him that I was going to preach. And then like a couple of weeks later, he was like, so you got your message together? And I was like, for what? He was like, for Mother's Day, you're preaching. And I was like, oh, I am? And forgot the whole conversation, okay? And then so, and then he was like, yes, you are. So hopefully you're prepared because I'm about to start announcing it. And I was like, okay. So then um, I was like, okay, yes, I'm doing this. I'm not, I'm doing this. And then Like that same week, I got a phone call from a friend, and the friend was asking us to pray. And I was like, okay, something had happened in their family, and he needed prayer. So I was like, cool, we're going to pray for your family, and we're going to pray for your situation. And um, then like a week later, I went to work, and at my job, one of my principal, who A lot of people know that I pastor at my job, but a lot don't. But I'm still the same, whether I'm Pastor Rhoda or I'm Rhoda, I'm still Rhoda, that's who I am. And the God that I serve still lives inside of me wherever I am. So my boss called me into the office and she asked me to pray. And um, so I was like, sure, what am I praying for? And um, she was like, well, you know, one of our teachers is having a trying time with her family. And I don't know if she knows your life, but I know your life. So I'm asking you, can you pray for her child? And can you pray for her life? And I was like, yeah, I got you. So at that moment in her office, I prayed for healing in their family. I prayed for the life of that child. And I prayed for that mother. And so that week, I was just troubled by the situation that had happened the week before. And I was laying in bed that night, and like at 2.30 in the morning, a bunch of stuff was just downloaded into me about being a mother. And I was like, okay, so I have to change what I'm going to preach. And so I was writing down those notes of what God had shared with me And um, the pivot took place. Mothering is hard. I don't know whoever said it was going to be easy. Some mothers look easy at it. So because you see those mothers from far off and it looks like, oh, they got it together. And you, so then you create in your mind, oh, she makes this look so easy. 
I can do this. And then your babies come home, and but your babies don't look like her babies, and your babies don't act like her babies, and your babies are built a little different than her babies. So you kind of see that it's not as easy as she made it appear. I always look back and reflect back onto my own mom. I'm the youngest girl of 10 children. So I'm number nine out of 10. And my mother made it look easy. Did I see her struggle? Not a lot. That doesn't mean it wasn't there. I just didn't see it. A lot of stuff I didn't see. But that doesn't mean because I didn't see it, the challenges weren't there. It was just she did a great job hiding the uneasy parts from her children. And at that time, you know, as I got older, I just thought that was selfish, you know? If I would have known that this was gonna happen, <laughs> maybe I would have thought let her after the first one. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. But no, <laughs> because that one was not a challenge. Let's go do this again. Yeah, then they stopped, they start, just kept coming. And I was like, wait, I'm not, you know, I'm good. Thank you. So, <laughs> but what makes mothering seems easy is having a village or establishing community. And we do that at the table. In Psalms 127 and 3, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Heritage, children, they are a heritage, amen, from the Lord. Ladies, let's just do our best and don't cry over spilled coffee. <laughs> Can I get a Kleenex? Let's define heritage. Amen. Something inherited, an heirloom, or portion possession. So if children are a heritage from the Lord, heritage is something that we inherited so children are a gift that we inherited from the Lord so because children are a gift they are a gift that are placed in our hands they belong to him he just entrusted us to care for them so we have to answer to God about how we handle the gift that he gave us. So we just can't talk to them how we want to because we have to be reminded when we want to talk to them what they are to you. They may not know that they're a heritage and that they're a gift from God. So when they act out at school and not acting very heritagely, we got to be reminded <laughs> that that's the gift that God gave to us. And what do you do with a gift? You nurture it. Nurturing, you bring something to them. So you have to watch what you're feeding them what you're feeding them spiritually, what you're feeding them naturally. I can't spiritually, I make sure I read the Bible to my children. I read to them, I have them pick out stories as they got older to read to me so that we, I know that you're understanding the word of God. And that you're understanding what I'm bringing to them, what I'm bringing to you. You know, when God was talking to me about nurturing and what nurturing means, and 
I had to kind of, I had to take the pause because every time I'm, God gives me something, I wanted to make sure even when I talk to other people, when I'm in other conferences or other platforms, I check my own house first. Because there is no reason for me to be trying to sweep around somebody else's front door and my door is full of dirt. Because sometimes we can't see our dirt when we're looking at others' dirt. So I try to focus here first. So I was like, okay, God, have I been doing that? Have I been watching feeding my children spiritually. And so I wait for God to show me in them. And he did just that. Um, Second to the youngest daughter, she is a seventh grader. She's in middle school. And um, she wanted to establish a club, a small group at her school. So she went to the dean of students and she asked, she wrote a letter petition asking what she could do because she wanted to establish a Christian club at her school. Now they already had a Christian club. They had a Christian athletic club and she was like, but it's a Christian athletic club. So not athletes are not going to be, they're not going to feel connected because they don't play a sport. Even though the athletic Christian club is for everyone. She was like, but if I wasn't an athlete, I wouldn't feel welcome. So she had to petition. She had to get a staff support to help her. So she signed, asked a teacher to work with her. And at first they said no. And she went back before them again and was like, I don't understand why you're saying no. And they were like, well, because we already have this Christian. She said, I understand that, but I'm not an athlete. I'm a cheerleader, but if I just started cheering, I was an athlete before that. I didn't feel like that was a club that was for me because I'm not an athlete. And so she did her argument, and he allowed her to do her Christian club. So with her club, one of the was 10 students. It was her and two other classmates, and they took turns um, presenting a message to their group. And she would always come to me and be like, Mom, okay, I want to just make sure that this is kind of lining up right, and I have a scripture to go get my text. And I'm like, it sounds great to me. And so the week of everything that was kind of happening and the message had came and that God wanted me to present, and she came, and then she asked me for help. And she was like, Mom, I need some bubbles. And I was like, you need some bubbles? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, well, you need like one pack of bubbles? She's like, well, no, I need at least 10 so everyone can have one. And I was like, okay. I didn't ask any questions. And she's like, well, do you want to know what I need them for? I was like, sure, you can tell me. And so she was like, it's for my lesson. It's for my small group. And we're going to talk about in my small group, children, you are having your own path. And that you don't have to follow others. And I'm like, wow, you're in the seventh grade. And you understand that as a seventh grader, that you can follow your own path. That God has a path ordained for you. And it's okay to follow that path and not feel pressure to follow the path of others. And she's like, I'm going to blow bubbles and you're going to see bubbles cluster together. But you'll also see bubbles off following their own path. And I lost it. Lost it, okay? Lost it. Lost it. And she was like, why are you crying? I'm like, it's a good cry. It's what I needed to hear to know that I'm nurturing her. Because she's able to take what I'm depositing into her and share with others. I was like, okay. The older two I know because I think as a child, when they were children, I had more time to spend with them because I worked out of my house. So we have interaction and I see that in the two of them. I've seen it several times before, but because I work out of the home with my younger two, sometimes you know I feel challenged with just parenting and knowing that, are they okay? 
So she showed me that she was okay. And that I was doing what the word of God is telling me to do towards her. And then on this week, Abigail had an incident at her school to where the students were just being rude and disrespectful to her teacher. And she came home and she was almost in tears by what, how they were behaving. And she was like, Mom, I had to say something. And she said the principal had a bunch of kids from our classroom when they were all just saying negative things about my teacher and how what she was doing and how she's not doing this and she's not doing that. And when I walked in the office, the principal was like, let me hear it. And she was like, I don't think you want to hear what I'm going to say. And so she was like, no, what do you want to say? And she was like, they were disrespectful. And they had no right coming in here telling you anything. Because she wasn't at fault. They are. And I was like, okay. And then she went on after that. And she said, Mom, I have to bring her a gift. I need to pour into her to let her know that she's doing a great job. And I was like, our money is tight, but I'm going to give you that to do that. Because it showed me again that the God that I serve, I'm able to pour into them. And they are getting it. And they're taking it and they're living from it. And not only do I have to bring, nurture them spiritually, I have to nurture them naturally. I have to make sure they're eating the right things. I have to be an example before them. I can't say you shouldn't be eating that while I'm over there chewing it. (laughs) I have to practice what I preach. So if I'm going to tell one of my kids, hey, make sure you get some salad. I'm not going to have a meditarian plate because... A meatarian, meaning nothing but meat. I need to have some vegetables on that plate to be an example for her, for my girls, to remind them that naturally I need to make sure you're eating the right things. So as parents, we need to also watch what we say around our children. We know, okay, they daddy not there. I get it. I understand. I don't have that issue. My husband was here. And just because my husband is in their life, it does not mean that there are times where there is friction between us. There will is some friction. There are some times where parenting styles may clash. He may do something I don't like. I still don't have the right to go and say something an earshot negative about their daddy because that is still their dad getting on my nerves. I wish he, I can't do that in front of them. Now I may feel that at sometimes, but however, comma, I can't allow them to hear me talk negative about their father in front of them. Because it's their job to build their own relationship. And I won't stand in the way. I always tell, I tell him all the time, you need to be present. Go to stuff. I know they in everything. I know. Everything. Everything. (laughs) You know, we have an agreement in our house. They, I think one of the girls do eight shows a school year. I think, minimum. And I'm like, okay, we got to get dad a minimum to attend. Because, yeah, he's not, he loves you. I'll be at all eight of them. That's what mothers do. He will show up, guaranteed. So you pick the best ones out of the two. And let dad know, and dad will be there. So we have that understanding. So I have to watch what I say in front of them have to have open lines of communication. That's how I pour into them. Open lines of communication. I have to ask questions I don't want to know the answers to. Honestly. 
Because some questions you, sometimes as parents, you try to ask questions without, you kind of walk around a circle of something. I got to ask the questions I don't want to know the answers to. Because I need to know, I need to know what's going on. And we also need to protect them. We protect them by keeping things away from them. I protect them by praying for them, praying with them, teaching them how to pray, monitoring what they put in their bodies, monitoring their social media accounts, monitoring what they're listening to. Don't they pass codes to their phone? I pay the bill. You in my house, I know your passcode. If I can't get inside your phone, you can't get inside your phone. Because I'm going to disable it until I figure out the passcode. Ooh, next try 20 minutes. Okay, next try 30 minutes. Ooh, next try 45. If you can't get into it, I can't. I can't get into it, you can't get into it. And even if you paying your bill in my house, you need my electricity to plug in your phone. So it full circles comes back to me. Now, if you want to pay electric bill, amen, because you need my house. So full circle, it comes back to me because I pay for the roof. I pay for the electricity. My oldest daughter, she pays. She has a new phone and she pay for it. I need to get inside of it. So at any time, I need to just walk past and go boop, 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 boop. Okay, what you doing? What you watching? Who you watching? What you listening to? Okay. And then I found out that you got like a secret album. I was like, oh, I was watching TV and somebody said something about a secret photo album. I was like, oh, how we open those? So yeah. <laughs> so now that I know, <laughs> it is no longer a secret. Oh, yeah, I want to see those. But as a mother, as a parent, my job is to protect what I've inherited. Mothers, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But what we do, it's how we recover from those mistakes. Don't cry over spilled coffee. It's okay. Things are going to get rough. Things are going to get difficult. But know that we're together and we're striving for better together. Be quick to repent if you make a mistake. Because we always, if they do something wrong, having them apologize to you, apologize to each other. But we never, as parents, want to be the one to be like, hey, I messed up too. Like, for example, I was looking for my charger. Every phone has their own charger. And so I was looking for my charger, and I couldn't find it. And I'm like, okay, I know it's normally in this drawer. So I looked in the drawer where it normally is kept at, and um, it wasn't there. And I was like, okay, let me look around the drawer a little bit more. So I went upstairs, or I yelled upstairs, and was like, who has my charger? Everybody got a charger. Why is my charger not in my drawer? When you all have your own chargers, everyone has a phone. The only one who doesn't have a charger is Abigail because she got an iPod. She don't really have a phone. She don't call nobody. So her thing can be dead all day. It does nothing. Where is my charger? Now, this is the intensity of my yelling. It doesn't get any louder than this. <laughs> so, but they know that I needed my charger because what I had in my hand was getting ready to die in a few moments. And I needed the charger. And so they're like, who has my charger? So they're all frantically looking. And the Lord was like, did you check the other drawer? And I was like, what other drawer? And so I went, checked the other drawer, and my charger was folded up my seat in there. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. I made a mistake. It was in the other drawer. I found my charger. I thank you all for looking so diligently, but I found it. But I was quick to admit my wrong. And I do that so that they understand I'm not perfect. I am going to make a mistake. But it's not what I do 
It's how I recover from it. Things are going to get messy. They're children. They're going to write on your walls. They're going to write on your tables, your carpet, your floor. What I did is I made a space for them to do that. Okay. I'm not going to spank you from writing on the wall. You're two and a half. You don't understand that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my paint washable. Or I'm going to put paper on the wall. This is your writing easel right here. Stay on this big old rectangle, right? All in that area. Stay in that area. And then we're going to tear that down and put up a new sheet all in that area, okay? We're going to put paint on the floor, under the paper on the floor. Stay in that area. Because kids are going to do kiddish things. And we just have to, as parents, as a mother, be able to be quick. Quick to accommodate. You don't want to wear that dress? Okay, I had one child that... I loved dresses. I couldn't wait to have a girl. But that was the first thing I wanted was a girl. Because I wanted to dress her in these frilly dresses. It took us an hour every Sunday to get that child dressed. Because I would get her dressed and she would get undressed. And I didn't understand. <laughs> I was frustrated. Because I was like, Gabrielle, just put the dress on, please. And the socks and these shoes. And Something was off by the time even her tights was off. I'm like, how are you wiggling out of these tights at eight weeks? I don't get it. <laughs> how are your socks and your shoes off? You shouldn't even know how to do this. And then when I didn't get the hit, and then as she got older, and then I would chase her around the house with these dresses just full of life, trying to get her to put her on your daddy. Her daddy was like, have you ever paused and thought that maybe she don't want to wear those? I mean, not like you could ask her and she could say, but she's showing you that she don't like that. So I was like, okay. I put her on something else and she stopped chasing. She stopped running. So I was like, that was it. She didn't want that. So I saved it for the next one. <laughs> Maybe I'll have another girl or I'll pass it on to a girl who likes those. And to this day, she just, I think the her frilly dresses she went for prom and for homecoming. Other than that, she fine. But now I do have one <laughs> that will. <laughs> and now that I'm older, I'll be like, child, what do you have on? Okay, it is not prom <laughs> or homecoming. <laughs> Put that in the closet. <laughs> and, but I had to learn in that each one's different. And because each one is different, I have to parent them different. What made me a mother was not having the child. What made me a mother is what I did with what was inherited to me. That's what made me a mother. So today... I want to take a moment and I want to pray with all of our mothers that are here today. I just want to pray a word of encouragement over you to know that it's okay. You got this. I know things are difficult. I know sometimes things get hard and you may not know what to do. But no coming to the table, bringing them to the house of God is the first start. It's the first step. Because what you see are other women who are in the same place that you are. One day at a time, making things work. Let us stand for prayer. Dear God, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you, God. Want to let you know, mothers, that it is okay. Just breathe. 
If you are a mother and you're here today, just close your eyes, lift your hands, and just take a few moments to breathe. Just breathe. God, you know that the gifts that you gave us from time to time was going to cause some difficulties. But God, we thank you that you blessed us with these great inheritance. And God, we thank you that you're giving us the tools to do right by you concerning them. God, we just pray and we pray that if they don't feel special any other day, we want them to feel special today. We want them to understand and know that you got this. And we're in this together. God, we just thank that. We thank you, Father, for right now just breathing into them, filling them like never before feeling any thoughts of what am I doing any thoughts of hopelessness any thought that I can't do this any negative thoughts God we thank you that you are filling them now with those positive messages of you got this you can handle this you can do all things Trust and believe in the God that's in you. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for each mother that is here today. Father, we also pray today for our mothers who are without their mothers. God, some days are easier than others. Some days are difficult. Some days are really hard. But there are a coalition of women out here, Father, that can lean on each other when they have those difficult moments to let them know, just breathe, you got this. Just breathe. This too shall pass. So, Mother God, we thank you. We thank you for just feeling those empty vessels. We thank you, God, for comforting them. Yes, God. Letting them know that you got this. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, there is a song that um, I know the band doesn't know, but that's just been on my heart. And I was just going to sing just a small portion of the song. Dad, can you pass me my phone? Just I needed the lyrics for a moment. Just a small portion. So while you all are standing or sitting, it's up to you. I just wanted you to hear this. And I'm fine. Oh, I got it. And just listen and just take in, take it in today. This goes out to the worried. This goes out to the stressed. Sorting out a million thoughts running through your head. To everyone that's waiting for better days ahead. Tired and frustrated. And leaving words unsaid, please don't hold your breath, just breathe. It is a miracle we can breathe. There's power in the way that we breathe. 
Release your heavy burdens and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This is why we have breath to praise the Lord. Because what God wants you to be able to begin to see is that harvest that he gives to you is not about you consuming it. It's about him trusting you with it so that you can be generous with it so that he can use you to bless other people and things. And one of the things that he wants you to be generous concerning is the church that you're connected to, the table that you're sitting at. But if we are only viewing finances through the lens of how does it benefit me, but not through the lens of God is benefiting you because he wants you to benefit others, then we're missing the whole point about giving. Because giving and receiving is about generosity. Somebody say generosity. So I will want to start off with John 3, 16. I'm not going to take long. We know this scripture, but I want you to see it from a generosity perspective. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to key in on the fact of this scripture that it says he gave his only. It didn't say he gave part. It didn't say he gave a little bit. It said he gave his only. So here's what you need to know about generosity. Generosity is giving and that God did it first. God will never ask anything of you from his word that he has not himself done first. So he wouldn't speak to you about being generous and giving and giving all if he isn't the one who has done it first because you cannot do what the Father has not done. How do I know this? Jesus said, I'm only able to do what I see the Father doing. And so you have the ability to be generous if you keep your eyes on the Father. Because in looking at the Father, you see generosity, and as a result, you can be generous. It's when we take our eyes off the Father. This is good. This wasn't in my notes. It's in my heart. It's what God's downloading to me right now. It's when we take our eyes off of the Father that we stop seeing generosity. It's when you put your eyes on your bills that you only see bills and not generosity. It's when you put, take your eyes off of the Father and only see your need. As a result, you can't see how to be generous because all you see is your need. But if you keep your eye on the Father, then generosity is not hard. Why? Because God did it first. And number two, if you keep your eyes on the Father, you know that whatever it is that he's telling you to do is right and he's not going to leave you left. Are you here today? So I'm not afraid of what tomorrow may hold if my eyes are on him. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen next month if my eyes are on him and I'm doing what he tells me to do. When you have a person who is not generous, it is because they changed where they were looking. I'm going to say it again. When you have a person who is challenged with generosity, it is because they have changed where they're looking and who they're looking to. Christian faith, I want to encourage you this morning, don't change where you're looking. And don't change who you're looking to. Stay generous. Because God pours out to generous people. He will not pour out to stingy people who have changed where they're looking. Are you here this morning? And it's not a one-time thing. Well, if I do it this week, it fixes it for the next month. No, it's an every single day thing. God, help me to be generous. God, help me to sacrifice. God, help me to keep my eyes on you and be able to hear you and do with resources what you told me to do. And if you do that, you cannot lose. Because even though God gave up a son, he gained sons. Are you here? He gained sons because he gave up a son. 
you'll never lose when you're giving to God. Whatever he is telling you to let go, let it go. Whatever he's telling you to be generous with, be generous with. And watch God give back to you multiplied what you gave away singularly. Amen, somebody. So on the behind me on the screens are our various giving platforms, our digital platforms. If you're not giving via, if you're not giving today via digital platform, uh, we have um, uh, envelopes that are at the table. If you don't have an envelope, raise your hand and our host will make sure that you get an envelope. But I want you today in your giving to release your tithe because it's your obedience, but it's also your generosity. And then begin to ask God, God, what would you have me add to my tithe? What is the offering you want me to be generous with today? And just do what he says. Some weeks I may come to you and say, hey, we need your help as a church and we need you to respond with a certain amount. And up to this point, we have never done that. I, that not that I can remember. We leave it to you every single week for you to be able to hear from God, for you to be able to respond on your own. Amen? Amen. So take a moment, hear from the Father, and as soon as you have your tithe and offering prepared, stand to your feet as we prepare to release it into the kingdom of God. Amen? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. All right, take your tithe and your offering or your device and hold it up towards heaven. Father, I thank you for every person that heard your word today and what I had to say. God, I thank you for this unique opportunity to see the gospel through the lens of generosity and how, God, you are going to change us as we give ourselves to you and to what the word is saying. Father, I thank you for the increase that comes into the life of your people because of them beginning to understand better the generosity principles that are littered throughout the gospel and throughout your word. That what you're looking from your people is obedience that produces generosity. And God, we need to know that as you can use us in the area of generosity, as you see things going through our hands, resources through our hands to bless others as you have directed, that God, we know that there is a funnel of generosity and resources that are coming back to our lives because you continue to give to the ones that are willing to give it away. So Father, thank you for the increase in our individual lives. Thank you that because of what we're doing right now, we won't miss a meal, a bill, or a deal. We give you praise for this, God. Let everything that is received today be used for the work of the ministry, the continued preaching of the gospel, that we will always be able to tell a dying world about a living Christ. And we give you praise for this now, God. In Jesus' name, let every glad heart say amen. amen. Precious hearts, you may have your seats. Time. Thank you for joining us at CFFC. We also want to connect with you further throughout the week. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up in our small groups at cffc.org forward slash small dash groups. See you this week.